Every year, on June 21st, Aboriginal groups across Canada gather to celebrate their culture and heritage on Aboriginal Day. In western and central Newfoundland, Mi'kmaq people have even more to celebrate, that many of their members have successfully become RCMP officers, primarily with the help of a small youth program, the Federation of Newfoundland Indians RCMP Summer Student Program. I owe everything to that F&I uh, with the uh, Summer Student Program. I owe everything to it because without that, I wouldn't have got that experience that would make me feel like, is this the job that I really want to do? I think that program single-handedly opened the door. I just had to do the hard work. This program that places Aboriginal youth into their local RCMP detachments has caused the bridging of a long-standing polarized gap of misunderstanding and mistrust between the Mi'kmaq people and the RCMP. It really bridged that gap and now it's just getting better and better and better with the relationship between the, the sunrise ceremony and, and that's been happening a lot now where the RCMP are getting involved and getting asked to come to this now and that's a big step. And I just feel that the, with that program, it really bridged the gap. Established in 1972 as the Native Association of Newfoundland and Labrador, the Federation of Newfoundland Indians, or FNI, represents the non-registered Mi'kmaq people of Newfoundland. The main objective of the organization is to achieve status recognition, status meaning federal recognition under the Indian Act. To promote, uh, foster and protect the interest of the Mi'kmaq people of Newfoundland and uh, as well uh, provide every opportunity for education as well as employment opportunities so that the standards of living of Mi'kmaq people living in those communities would be uh, better improved. Within its mandate, the Federation recognizes and values its young people. It actively reaches out to the youth in its membership and in 1998, Elizabeth Lasaga, a member of the Flat Bay Indian Band, was hired to be their first youth coordinator. For, from 98 to 2000, I think it was, I worked as the Aboriginal Youth Coordinator and served the entire western and central region for the FNI to engage um, all Aboriginal youth, 15 to 30, who were at risk and what we called at risk, uh, life skills, employment barriers to, to moving forward. At that time, if a youth um, came to me and they wanted a job or they wanted a trainer in something or they wanted to develop a career, I would put so much time into one person that if there wasn't a program or an opportunity available, then I would go create it. Young Ken Lasaga was encouraged to seek her help in pursuing his lifelong dream. Policing was always an interest of mine. He always wanted to be an RCMP officer, and I knew that from little growing up with him, that that was his calling. Pursuing this dream as an Aboriginal, though, would have its challenges. The police have always been seen as the enemy, I think, with Native people. It was probably one of the, the most taboo thing you could do in, in our community would be to to tell something to a Mountie that would get someone in trouble. The old um, understanding of RCMP again was that there was RCMP and there was you. There also existed the perception that to become a police officer one had to meet very high eligibility criteria. Years ago it was almost a closed doors type of thing. You had to be six feet tall and you had to be almost a genius and uh, to get in. Unless you were a an upstanding citizen without a blemish, you weren't equal. I think that that was a, there was generations of that understanding. It was almost like, you know, movie stars or, you know, that type high-end uh, careers. It would seem unlikely then that a young native person from rural Newfoundland would even consider a career with the RCMP. I had an interest to the RCMP, was uh, wondering how could I get in. And today there's so much recruiting you know how to get in. Back then it wasn't a whole lot. The RCMP were really on the cusp of moving from the old ways of the way they, they dealt with the Aboriginal pop population, that authoritative 
way they were realizing didn't work. And they were wanting then to move into um, uh, communicating and, you know, approaching things differently with more respect and peership. So that was really a good time for us to develop those programs. So Elizabeth Lasaga set out to help make Ken Lasaga's dream a reality. I connected with the community liaison officer for RCMP headquarters at the time, and we developed the program. The main objective is to let the youth that are interested in a career in the RCMP to try and uh, get an insight on what the life of an RCMP officer actually entails. Essentially, it's a, a nine-week program. The first week, uh, the cadets, this is fully sponsored by the Federation Newfoundland Indians. They pay for their salary, their travel, their meals. Uh, they get a week in the RCMP headquarters in St. John's. They're fully oriented in all aspects of policing that we do, from you know, presentations by the dogman, the traffic services, etc. Uh, once they receive this orientation, they go back to their respective communities. Uh, they're paired up with police officers within their detachment areas. And they get to see really how the, uh, the police officers uh, live and work within their communities. John Dawson was one of the first graduates of the RCMP summer student program. It was amazing. Everyone just felt an accomplishment just from the seven, ten days training that we received and, and the confidence that they, they gave to us in those, in those seven days and that week that we trained was, was amazing. You're in there, you're doing everything that everybody's doing, or at least on a smaller degree, but you're, at least you're seeing the bigger part of it too. You know, uh, how can you compare that? There's no other way to do it as far as I know. This hands-on approach has yielded the program, in its short 10-year history, a tremendous success rate. A lot of the students that come out of this program write the RCMP exam. A lot. There was no way when I finished it for the summer, I, I was trying to get back into some kind of program, into the auxiliary program, into something, because I couldn't see myself doing anything else. When he went out to Regina, he was ready to take on that challenge and, uh, and succeed. But it is in the relationship between the Mi'kmaq people and the RCMP that the success of this program is most felt. By integrating Aboriginal youth within the RCMP, the program has opened the doors to better communication and a better understanding of each other. This program kind of brings the police closer to the Native community and uh, gives the community a better understanding. They didn't just take our people in, but they encouraged us to go in to the RCMP. An RCMP officer in, in the fullest sense of the word, just like the others. And that's, that makes us kind of equal. What better way to develop like a sensitivity towards Aboriginal culture and Aboriginal peoples and customs and, and ways of living than by uh, working side by side with other Aboriginal young men and women. We get to see them and their culture and their communities, so it, it helps us as police officers as well. Just bringing the two realms together, understanding that there's not much difference, that's a facade, what we used to think, that RCMP is different. By bridging the gap, the Federation of Newfoundland Indians RCMP Summer Student Program has created a brighter future for their young people and it has caused a deep sense of pride for both the Mi'kmaq communities and the RCMP. I don't believe the community people now have to be afraid that the cops are coming or the RCMP are coming, that they can be, you know, a member of your community that can bring great strength to the community and friendship there. It breeds a more healthy community policing environment that we want to want to work in. Now, I really appreciate that the, the Mounties are are out there for me. And, uh, you know, I also know that they have to be. It's, it makes a wonderful, safe society. And it just gives you hope, and gives you drive, and gives you direction. The whole community is, is given a confidence boost, I think, that, that we're on the map for this. Eagle.